there we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so okay I'll do a little I'll do a little intro here so <laughs> yeah. um so welcome to the webinar from Alberta Homeschooling Association and we are so excited tonight to have Krista with us Krista um is a member of our association on the board and she is a fantastic resource on everything reading and literacy and children so she's going to do her own introduction, but I just want to say a big welcome to you, Krista. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you so much, Judy. Yay! <laughs> so I guess I wanted to sort of ask people before I really get started, um, maybe if you can put in the chat why why you're here, like what, what you want to learn about, because I was going to talk about um, obviously reading and literacy, um, but are your children like younger children or do you have older children? Um, do you have any like really specific questions that you're here for just so that I make sure that I address them and is that okay? Yeah, that's wonderful. So just um, right in the chat box, um, maybe, yeah, older children, younger children, any specific questions? I always feel we should play music or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. I had a good okay. one. We have a participant. Her son is six and just learning to read. Older two are great readers already. And we have another six-year-old getting started with reading. Yes, that's such the age, right? It, it really is. That's great. And I have a lot of information for, for both of you. Yeah. And if anybody has older children, I do have information. I just included it more at the end of my presentation. Um, but there's, there's stuff that hopefully will help everybody. Um, okay. Yeah. So we definitely have some youngers learn. It's just starting out and then probably people with older kids too. So, yeah. Sounds great. Okay, yeah. I will start to share my screen. Um, and, and, um, yeah, let's see. There we go. We can see it. And if I go over to this one, this. There we go. Can everybody see it? Yep. Okay. So obviously you're here for my presentation. How my child isn't reading. Um, I'd like to say they're probably just not reading yet. It's going to happen. Try not to worry too much. Um, I was a librarian. I got my master's in library and information studies from the University of Toronto. And I did my BA. I worked in a public library for quite a few years, um, but in Ontario. Um, and then after having children, I started homeschooling them. And I have two kids and they're both great readers now, but it I, I really worried about one of them. And I'll tell you the story about it in, in a little bit. The other one picked up books right away. Um, so I was gonna talk about why is literacy important and what is literacy? So usually when we think about literacy, we just think it's reading and writing, but there's actually a whole lot more. Um, it's the ability to identify, understand, and interpret a lot of information. Um, okay, in reality, it's it's so much more. So most people would agree today that literacy includes nine essential skills. So like it's reading text, um, document use. So being able to like flip through a, a book and understand um, how to use the index and the table of contents and that sort of thing. Um, numeracy, writing, oral communication, 
working with others. So like ability to follow instructions and to give instructions, um, being able to use a computer, continuous learning and thinking skills. And that all comes from UNESCO. Um, so literacy really matters. And UNESCO kind of made a whole big report that it, but basically you can sum it up that literacy empowers and liberates people so that people can fight for the rights when they need to. You can write a letter to your member of parliament. You can speak out when something's wrong. Um, it reduces poverty and increases participation in the labor market. So people can uh, get better jobs if they have literacy skills. Obviously, um, we're unfortunately pretty limited if you can't read. And literacy has positive effects on our health. You can look up information and you feel empowered to ask questions at the doctor's office or of health professionals. And literacy empowers people and gives us greater life choices. So it's obviously um, pretty important. Um, but where do our kids learn literacy skills? I'm gonna say everywhere. <laughs> they're learning them all the time. So when they're playing with their dolls and their puppets, their cars and their toys, um, they are building critical skills about the world around them and they're practicing telling stories. Um, when they're role playing with other kids, like playing house and playing doctor, um, playing astronaut, they're putting themselves um, in new experiences. So they're being the teacher, they're being the astronaut, and they're practicing the language, perhaps. They're, they're, they're learning all those things and, and trying out those different hats, which is an important literacy skill. And, and they're writing stories doing that, too without the writing. Um, most children that go to school are gonna need their parents and families involved in teaching them about literacy. Um, so it's kind of almost the same thing with homeschooling. Um, parents are really heavily involved in it because that's that's usually where literacy and reading learns, like where, where, where literacy and reading skills happen is usually in the home. Um, and we're pretty lucky to live here in Canada because where we live, um, most people, sorry, I'm just going to let this, maybe Judy can let this person in. Do you see that, Judy? Um, I'm not sure if I can do it. Oh, I think it happened. Okay, so... Yeah, so kids learn literacy with role playing with other kids. They learn literacy by talking, reading, singing, playing, drawing. They learn it following a recipe, listening to an audiobook. They're practicing liter literacy and they're also gaining a lot of comprehension skills that way. Um, and there's so much talk about early literacy skills, but um, early literacy doesn't have to happen before age five. There's a lot of pressure out there. And I think that it's unnecessary. Um, there's a lot of children out there that learn to read much later and they end up reading just as well as the earlier readers. So by the time they reach like age 12 or 13, 14, they're all reading the same anyway. So it doesn't really matter if they started when they were three or four or five or six, or if they start when they're 10 or 12, um, they all end up at the same level in the end. So I was gonna tell you a little bit about my kids with learning how, how they learned to read. So I have two kids. So my youngest kid, when she was three, she picked up a book and she's like, mom, I can read this. I didn't believe her, but she did. <laughs> and I was like, maybe your sister or someone read, to, read it to her, but I knew her sister couldn't read yet. So I like, can you read another book to me? And she picked up another book and she could read it. So I was like, oh, wow. Okay, I guess you can read. <laughs> so, um, but it was really funny because with my first kid, my oldest, she had a lot of trouble learning to read. She told me when she was about five years old, she's like, mom, I want to read like you. So I said, okay. And we went to the library and I really carefully chose a really um, easy beginner reader for her. And it was 
a real struggle and she was frustrated and it wasn't fun. So we put it down. Um, it just, she wasn't ready for it. And later we tried doing different phonics stuff. Like there's a program on the computer called reading eggs. And we tried that for a little while, but that just like, she got to a point with that where she kind of hit a, a wall and she just couldn't, I think it was probably with like joining sounds together and she just wasn't ready for that. So we stopped doing that. And I just kept reading to her. And then I found a program by Julia Donaldson called the Songbirds series. And it's kind of like early reader books, but they're really well written, um, which is unusual for early readers. I don't know if any of you have had time to read early readers, but they're usually pretty horribly written. They're not fun books. And my my kiddo, when she saw them and started trying to read them, she was like, mom, this is a bad book. I don't like this book. So, I kind of was like, yeah, you're you're right. I, I couldn't help but agree with her. Um, but we found those ones by Julia Donaldson to be pretty good. And they progressed really slowly and they were really phonics based. So um, they helped, but still she kept running into walls. And so we would just take a few months off or um, however long I felt like she needed. And then we'd pick it up again later in a few months and start over again. And she'd get a little further. But it wasn't really until she she got a little bit older, probably around age nine, and she found a book on optical illusions that I had brought home, and she loved optical illusions. And she just picked up that book, and she could suddenly read because she really wanted to know about optical illusions. And uh, so that, I guess, was what called her into reading. Um, I think kids need to be interested in it and and really want to do it. And ever since then, I, I think she's never put down her books. She's always reading. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, I also know of a few families with kids that didn't start reading until they were 12 years old. And they also are really, really avid readers now. So, um, and, and they taught themselves to read at age 12. So um, don't give up hope. There's, you know, your kid's gonna read. We live in, in in a world where we're all surrounded by literacy. It's it's on some of the road signs. It's on our computers. It's it's on our phones. Kids are surrounded by literacy, and and you really can't help it. And so, kind of like how we how we learn how to talk, and we don't um, ever talk about getting needing a curriculum to teach our kid how to talk. Um, reading, kind of should be like that like it, I, I think there's just a bit of of um funny stuff with that like they they need to I, I think we need to relax a little bit about it because kids are surrounded by it and and we're naturally going to learn how to read for for most kids so um as your kid is learning to develop literacy skills, the things that you can be doing at home are um, reading to them because they're picking up the words as you're reading to them and they're learning new words. They're seeing how words are spelled on the page um, and they're seeing how, how you turn the pages of a book when they're really little. Um, they're picking up that the pictures match with the text. There's there's all kinds of skills in there that that they're learning. Um, talking to your children is majorly part of literacy skills because they're picking up, up words and language. Singing helps them a lot. So in those early years, um, and even later, if they like singing, singing is great. And it teaches them how to spell words because when you're singing, you're taking a word across like three different notes or however many notes. And so it gets stretched out and you um, you hear the different sounds. So they they can understand a little bit more about how words are spelt and how they go on a page. Um, playing, obviously we talked about that um, and drawing and writing also are literacy skills. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about those in a minute. So with reading, sharing books together is really, really important. Um, find stories that you love, because if you love the story, chances are your kid's going to love it too. 
Um, because when you read something that you love, it's it's kind of your your joy in it is really contagious, and your kids gonna gonna see that and feel that and and want to want to share in that. So that that really helps. Um, and find find stories and books that will interest your child too. So if your kid's interested in video games or graphic novels, if they like dogs or trucks, you got to find books that interest them. If you're having trouble finding books that interest them, ask a librarian. They're usually generally really good and really, really helpful. Um, so definitely try that. Um, or ask in some of the online groups too, and often people will be able to help you there too. Involve your child in choosing books, visit the library together, and make it a daily habit that everyone enjoys. One thing my kids really liked with reading is having a special spot at home. So um, we kind of Every now and again, I'll create like a reading nook in the house. Like we'll set up a tent in the basement and I give them flashlights and pillows and they like to go down there and have their own like special reading spot or it could be in the backyard um, or it could even be in a closet. It doesn't really matter. It could be a fort made with chairs and blankets. Like kids just love that and having their special spot even if it's just a picture book that they're going through, or if they want you to go in the fort with them and read to them, it's just, it really makes reading special and they like that. Um, and having books around the house really helps. Um, you can buy books from the bookstore or from thrift shops, but you can also go to the library. I go all the time with my kids and we take home like tote bags full of books. There's so many books my kids want. Um, things that really enticed them were drawing books, um, a lot of graphic novels. Graphic novels are really wonderful because they, um, they're kind of like comic books. I don't know if you guys, um, know them and are familiar with them, but they have, they, it's, the story's told mostly through pictures. So you need to read the pictures and there's fewer words, but often the words are really carefully chosen. So sometimes they're bigger words. Um, but the kids, because they have the pictures, it really helps them to understand the story. Also, graphic novels are great because when kids are are first learning to read, their comprehension skills are not that great. So they have trouble understanding what they're reading because their pace of reading is too slow. So they'll be like, they'll, they'll read the first word and then they'll get to the second word and they've already forgotten what the first word was. So the joy in the story is kind of gone. So it's really important to keep reading out loud to your kids for as long as they'll let you, really. My kids both read very well. They read novels on their own, but they still love it when I read to them. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about how, is how talking is a great early literacy skill to practice at home and, and that you're probably already doing. So talking about what you're doing while you're doing it at home. So if you're preparing your dinner, involve your child and talk to them about how you're chopping up the onions and making the salad or stirring the batter to make the cake and putting things in the oven, that sort of thing. Um, and if you're looking for something, like I often am, I always lose my keys, then you want to talk to your child about um, how you're looking for it and where you might go to search and how you might find it. Those are all literacy skills because they're they're like steps. It's kind of like the instructional literacy. And that's a really important literacy that we all need. It's not just reading books kind of literacy. It's like that procedural literacy too. Um, and tell your child stories and involve your child in storytelling. So sometimes you might want to start off telling a story and get your child to, to add to the story. Or, you know, if you're talking to grandparents or friends or family about something you did, you can start telling the story and ask your kid to, to help, if that makes sense. And you're building their literacy skills doing that. Singing is another great early literacy skill. So early elementary school kids, um, really, most of them really love songs. They they sing songs and it helps them to learn, learn new words. It helps them to see the smaller sounds in the words. And it helps us to remember things because music activates a different part of the brain than regular spoken, spoken language. Um, so sing songs that you enjoy, sing songs that your kid enjoys, play songs. 
dance around. And if you don't like singing, then, you know, do some rhyming and playing with words and dancing because kids, kids will be absorbing the, the words from the song if they're dancing and they'll probably turn it into a dance routine or they're, it's, they're, they're inevitably getting literacy skills from it. Um, but the biggest thing really is, is finding and keeping the joy in all of this, right? Playing is important. So children experience the world around them through play, which we all know, and play helps them with developing their language and so social skills, as well as their fine and gross motor skills. When children are played, they're making up stories. So keep the play child directed. Children um, will, they kind of shut down when we, you know, impose play on them and it's not really play anymore. So they're they're making stories up as part of their play. And that that's a form of literacy. And they need to practice using words and give instructions that others can follow as part of their play or follow the instructions that others are giving. Um, and sometimes you might be able to inject some words into their play, like um, putting words on things that surround them, like, you know, table and chair. Some kids like that sort of thing, but you don't really have to. Um, my kids really enjoyed playing a couple of games when they were little. One of them was called Zingo, and they really liked that probably when they were about up to age six, I think. It's kind of like a bingo game but it's called Zingo with a Z in front. And it's it's got this little Zingo machine and these little plastic cards and the cards have a picture on them, but they also have a simple word on them. And so the kids can, you, you can, they're, they're learning how to put these cards on, on a bingo sheet and they're learning how to, how the words look and along with a picture. So it, it's really easy for them to understand that this is a tree or whatever's on the card. Another game my kids really enjoyed, um, and I think this was probably one of their favorite games when they were about age five, was called Uclu. And it's um, it's kind of like a search and find game. So it had all these cards um, and it would be like, find, like it, it's, it's in your shoe and you'd put the next card in the shoe and then it would say look under the table and then you'd have a card under the table and finally at the end you'd have a surprise card and you could put a candy or something or a treat for your kid um I never did I never needed to my kids weren't um generally motivated by that they just loved having a surprise card and the hunt for for what was next with with that game um and you can make up all kinds of games um so hopefully that's helpful and drawing and writing is another way to help get your kids some literacy skills. If you're drawing together um, or just have them draw and then have them tell you about their drawing, drawings can tell stories. And you can write down the story for them. Or you can just listen to what the story is and talk about the story with them. The important part really is having fun and shouldn't have any pressure associated with it. If it does, then I think you should probably stop and try and do fun things together that, that involve literacy skills that just don't have the pressure. Um, so next I was gonna talk about how to help a beginning reader. So with beginning readers, it's just as important to work on developing their confidence as it is to develop their reading skills. So um, praise them and encourage them. Don't let them feel any lesser than anyone else if they can't read. If they're not reading, then they're not reading yet. And make sure that they know that because in time, it's going to come. And don't give older kids learning to read baby books. Find, find books that are suitable or appropriate that for them to learn to read at the age that they are. And there are books out there. Just you probably have to ask a librarian to, to find them. I do have some books that at the end of this that maybe will be helpful if, if that's what you're looking for. If your child can read a bit and they're older, but they need to work on comprehension, then maybe check out some graphic novels. 
they're great stories and no one should knock down a graphic novel and be like, oh, that's a comic book. Like when we were kids, um, graphic novels are amazing. And there's some graphic novels that have won Pulitzer prizes. So really they're, they're an amazing way of telling a story. It's, it's different from just writing all the words on a page and it requires a different sort of reading skill um, to be developed because you have to read the pictures as well as read the words. Um, maybe it means finding a book of recipes or a nonfiction book about an animal or something else that they're interested in. You definitely need to match your child's interests and their reading ability. So if if they pick a book up and they're really adamant that they can read it, but you think it's too hard, you can let them. You can try it. Um, but if you can find another one that's similar and maybe bring it home too, just in case that's maybe a little bit easier, it it, it might be advisable. Um, it depends on the kid, right? Um, and every kid's going to be different. But um, sometimes what I did when my kids were little to try and figure out if a book would be their level is I would open up the book to the middle and get them to read a page and see are they able to comprehend what's happening which can sometimes be tough in the middle of a book so that part may or may not work um, but how many times are they stumbling on words if they're stumbling more than a couple of times that book might not be the right one for them yet um unless they're really insistent that it is, you know. So um, that's that that's something that I tried as a librarian and as a parent. Um, sometimes too, what I, I what I would do is I would encourage the kids interest in a book by reading to them. And sometimes you can start by reading a chapter and then you, maybe have something else you got to do. So you got to put the book down. But sometimes if a kid is really interested and they really want to read, they might pick up that book and, and keep on reading. So that's something else that I've seen happen. Um, and just keep reading out loud to your kids. Even after they're reading all by themselves, they continue to learn new words and gain reading skills from read aloud time. And my kids are nine and 11. And sometimes when I read to them, they're like, oh, mommy, I thought that word was something else. <laughs> And so it's, you know, it's, it's worth it to keep reading to them because they're, they're continuing to learn. And if you maybe don't have the time to, to read to them yourself, you can put on an audio book and they're, they're going to learn that way too. Um, so if your child's stumbling on a word, um, I hope that y'all will remember that reading should be enjoyable and it should be about developing confidence. Um, it's okay to tell your child what the word is if they're stumbling. You don't have to make them sound it out, but if you want to, you can try sounding the word out together. Uh, if your child is is interested in that, then, then do that. You can ask the child if um, the word that they are using makes sense. They, they may or may not know. And does the pictures in the book provide any clues to what's happening? Um, like, like I said earlier, when a child's uh, not a strong reader yet, they might prefer for you to read to them. And that's probably because your comprehension level is just not as good as it needs to be yet. It's going to get better. They just need to practice and they need to be really motivated. If you read too slowly and you can't remember the word you just said, it becomes a monotonous task. And then the story gets lost and the joy of reading is lost. So sometimes it just you know, when someone's not strong enough yet, sometimes just reading to them, they're, they're gaining words that way and um, learning how to read. So some other things that you can do as a parent to share literacy skills with your child is uh, you, you, you can leave notes and cartoons for them. I had a friend and her daughter learned to read from the cartoons she wrote to her and that's that's how her kid learned to read. And then her kid would write cartoons right back to her with, with notes back. Um, you can write letters and jokes to friends and grandparents with your kids. Kids always love jokes. So that's usually usually a good one. I, uh, I got my daughter to do that and she would copy them from a joke book. And she, she always loved doing that. And 
luckily the grandparents, you know, had a good sense of humor and would laugh with her and, and enjoy that with her. Um, you can journal together if your kid's into that. Explore new topics. Tell stories together as a family. And everybody should get time to tell part of the story if they want to. Some kids that doesn't work for though because they don't like the, the pressure of it. Um, I have one kid that loves doing that and my other kid, not so much or at least not yet. And that's okay. You need to find things that your kids love. Don't force these things. You don't need to do everything. Do what you love and your kids are going to see that you love it and they'll probably enjoy it too. And if they don't, then find something else that you both enjoy because you really want to have that joy in reading and joy in learning. So if your child is really struggling, you, you should probably get help. So if they're struggling to read and there's a family history of reading challenges, um, or if they're struggling to read and there's a history of speech delays, or if they're older than age eight and repeatedly mixing up similar letters, and if they're avoiding reading at all costs and not enjoying being read to, then trust your gut feelings as a parent and get help. You can ask your facilitator or you can get in contact with Khan Academy as they have resources to help out homeschoolers. It's a service that we have available to us in Alberta and we should take advantage of it when we need it. I've heard it's, it can be really helpful. So if, if anybody's having any of these things, then definitely feel free to, to contact them for some help. So John Taylor Gatto says that you can teach your children to hate reading, to do it poorly, and to hate themselves for not measuring up to the false premises of institutional reading practices, premises which provide the foundation of our multi-billion dollar reading industry. Honestly, though, I hope everybody here wants to teach their kids to love to read. My goal with teaching my kids is always to teach them to love learning. That means that I need to model my love for learning and my love for reading. They pick up so much from us as parents and reading is no different. So we need to show them that we love it too. The joy we have for reading and learning is contagious. Visit your library, go to literary events and author talks that might interest your kids. Some of them are really, really, really great. And some of them are available over Zoom. Um, other ways you can inspire them to read and love learning. Um, find inspiring friends. Keep books around the house and model reading. Visit your local bookstores in the library. Create a culture of wonder and learning in your home. Have discussions about history, literature, and ideas. You can even write a letter to an author if you've liked their book or the illustrator. I've done that with my kids and they've even written back. So, and, you know, when that happens, your kid just feels really, really happy and really special and, and acknowledged. And it also encourages the writer and author to do more books like that, too. They love that. So I would definitely recommend it. And I want you all to know that you can relax and have fun with this. When your kid's ready, that's when you need to teach them to read. If they have no interest in it right now, put it aside and do these other things that I've said and, and it's gonna come. Uh, John Taylor Gatto says it only takes 100 hours and when a kid wants to learn and is ready, that's really all it's gonna take for them to learn. Remember, very few kids make it all the way to adulthood without learning to read. So I've got here some of the books my kids really loved when they were getting started reading. So there's Julia Donaldson's Songbirds series. Um, they do have a lot of Britishisms in it, uh, which I had to explain to my kids. Um, but I, I think they were really, really good and I'd highly recommend them. And then there's the elephant and, fig, elephant and Piggy books. My kids just loved them. They'd act out the stories in them. They would memorize them and, and read them when, when it was memorized. Um, they just, everything about those books, they, they really loved. And I enjoyed them as an adult, which 
it's hard to say that you enjoy an early reader because they're they're usually not written with very much creativity. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a lot of great books out there for kids. Don't feel like you have to stick to the early readers. Read other books with your kids because you want your kids to love reading. And a lot of those early readers are really boring <laughs> and just not worth, worth, worth spending the time. And if your kid really likes a book, then you can go and you can do a Google search and say, if you like Elephant and Piggy, then, and just hit enter on that search. And Google will probably come up with other similar ones that other people have said, oh, my kid likes this book and, and these ones are very similar. And you might find some others that are great, but you can also ask a librarian um, and you can ask on some of the, the chats too. As my kids got past the early, early readers, but they weren't quite yet into bigger novels, they loved some of these ones. So um, Press Start is the book in the middle. And it was a real motivator for my oldest child who had a lot of trouble with learning to read. Um, she she loved it because it was like a game and it was like a comic book kind of style. And it was really easy to read. The chapters were short and they always left on you know, on, a, on a high note on a high note. So you wanted to figure out what was going to happen next. So it was always like exciting to know what would happen next. Um, my kids both loved the Ling and Ting books. Um, the, so they have like twice as silly. It's about these twins and they do things like if they get two pairs of shoes and they're not the same, they, they switch their shoes. So one will wear a red shoe and a pink shoe and the other one will have a red shoe and a pink shoe or socks and things like that. And my kids loved that and they wanted to do that too. So they did that with each other. Um, the Mr. Putter and Tabby series um, by Cynthia Ryland is another great, great um, kids series for kids that are not quite ready for a chapter book yet, or it's, it's, but past that really early reader stage, they're really good. And Remy Lai has some really great ones out that are new. There's Rainbow the Koala, and there's a few others. And the Frog and Toad collection, my kids love those. They just, they laughed so hard. Often I would read them to them, but they'd also pick them up and read them as well. So those are some that we liked. And later on, they really liked Critter Club books and Daisy Dreamer books um, before getting into the chapter books. So I want to make sure I talk a little bit about the older kids. Um, so high-low books. Ask your librarian about a high-low book for your kid if they're having trouble reading um, or if they're maybe not got a lot of interest in reading um, because high-low books are high interest and low reading level. So if their comprehension isn't great or if, um, if maybe they're struggling with reading, it's kind of one of those books that's it usually has a lot of suspense like it just it keeps them wanting to read what, what's the next what's going to happen next it's it's always there for those books um there's also a lot of great graphic novels and book series that might suit your child so um here's actually I, I've listed some so like graphic novels like lunch lady zeta the space girl dog man bad kitty stick dog, diary of a wimpy kid. Some of those might be um, worth looking at. Um, there's also novel series and Benicula also has a graphic novel. So you could go either way with that. There's the Rotten School Books by R.L. Stein, the Emily Winsnap series, Charlie Bone and the Time Warp Trio. There's all kinds of books. And then there's like an endless amount of nonfiction books and nonfiction can really motivate kids because um, you can find something that they're interested in. You can find one on their video game that they love. You can find one on dogs if they love dogs. My youngest kid, she just loves dogs and she's got a whole book of all the different dog breeds and she's she knows all everything about them and she quizzes us on them. <laughs> it's great. It's never too late to learn to read. And there really isn't any difference, like I said, between a child that's going to learn to read at age three and a kid that starts reading at 14. They all end up at the same reading level. If you want to do some more reading yourself on this topic, I've got a link right here to a um, great article on how children um, learn to read without schooling by Peter Gray. That's the top link. 
And then there's a blog post underneath that by Idzi. And Idzi was unschooled and taught herself to read as an older child. And she discusses it um, in that blog post. And it, it might be interesting if you have an older child who's not yet learned to read to, to hear what Idzi says about her process of learning to read as an older kid. Um, and Peter Gregg, I'll give you kind of like the summary of his article. Um, he, he gives seven principles of learning to read without schooling. So the first one is that non -school children, for non-school children, there's no critical period or best age for learning to read. Okay, so it doesn't matter if they're three or if they're 12 or 13 and learning to read, they'll still learn. And that motivated children can go from apparently non-reading to fluent reading very quickly. I've read stories about people whose older kids, they just... They couldn't read yesterday and the next day, they're suddenly able to read. I just read a story about a, I think she was nine or 10 years old, a little girl, and she she was not able to read, but she wanted to make brownies and she wanted to make them really badly. So she had a recipe in front of her and she made them. Her mom and dad said, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm working. I can't help you. I'm too busy right now. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So she just got the ingredients and she stirred everything and made it. And she's like, mom, can you put this in the oven? And so the mom was able to do that. And the mom helped with taking it out of the oven, but uh, she made brownies. And she realized at that point that she really could read. And it wasn't just reading words. She was reading you know, fractions and stuff too. So it's pretty amazing what, what kids can do. Um, he also says for number three, that attempts to push reading can backfire. They can make your kid not enjoy reading or learning. So just be careful about pushing it. It's, it's not the greatest idea. Um, number four, children learn to read when reading comes to them a means to some valued end or ends. So if there's something that they really want to learn, then your kid is going to learn to read just like that kid who made the brownies and learned to read in the process. Number five, reading like many other skills is learned socially through shared participation. Six, some children become interested in writing before reading and they learn to read as they learn to write. Um, my youngest kid was like that. My oldest kid, not so much. It was probably about three years after learning to read. And she didn't learn to read until she was like nine. And well, actually, I guess it's about two years. She's finally doing a little bit of writing now that she's 11. And it's still, it's writing doesn't come easy to her. And I'm just giving her time on that right now. She's she's not ready for it and, and, and it's okay. But when there are things that she wants to write, she writes them really well. So I, that's, that's, that's where we're at. And I'm trying not to worry as a parent, but it, it is hard, I must admit. Um, and the last thing Peter Gray says is there's no predictable course through which children learn to read. So, um, that children learn to read in all different ways and how one children learns to read how one child learns to read is not going to be the same as how another child learns to read and that's okay and I wanted to say thank you to all of you and if you have any questions please let me know I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now so that we can do that that was fantastic <laughs> lots of good information um Thank you. we i don't know we kind of have a question in the chat group um from christy and we're we're a small group so i don't know christy if you want to um unmute but she says she has a nine-year-old that is struggling to advance with her, her reading looking for advice on how to help her progress as she's starting to feel like she's struggling christy are you here I think I, I like, sure. I really like the book suggestions, Krista, like, because it's really hard to find books. And I, I also really like the idea of just going to the library. And I don't think, like, I don't think I would have thought of that back when my son was struggling to read is going to the library and asking them for suggestions. So I think that's awesome that you, that you have that uh, expertise. 
Thank you. Yeah, it's it's that's that's a lot of why the librarians are there. And sometimes if you're in a small town library, it can be hard to ask a librarian, um, depending on what your question is. But um, it's there's also like online ways to ask them questions so that you can be more anonymous if if uh, you have any embarrassment about asking whatever you've got to ask. But yeah, and getting your kid to approach a librarian too sometimes is, is a helpful thing for them to develop their confidence. Well, how do you do it online, Krista? Do you, um, do you know? Usually there's, actually, I should check if they have that in Alberta, but I think a lot of the websites have like ask a question on them. Like, I don't know. I, I know in Ontario we had, there was a whole service behind it and all the libraries kind of came together and did it. Um, I'll go in the Calgary library and just see, cause I'm in Calgary, if they have it. Um, but it would usually just be on their website as ask a librarian. I, I don't see that. Hmm. Anyway, that, that's a, an interesting thing. Um, contact us maybe ask our experts they have they have a hotline where you can phone them so that would be more anonymous you could call them um and oh and it says send us a message through chat so i think the chat is probably okay and so in the contact us it has like a send us a message through chat or you can like chat online with them or call them on the calgary library website under contact us do do libraries have specific staff um, that are assigned to the children department? Because I know in Calgary libraries, there's a definite children section. It's it depends on the library. Every library is run different because they're all municipally funded, right? So. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's good advice. I really liked your advice too is for struggling readers um you know not not giving them baby books I really I really had trouble finding like age appropriate I mean you don't want to give an eight-year-old boy a baby book right no. <laughs> so we we tended to go for um comic books like Asterix and Obelix and um so yeah. I would get my son to read the the Captain Haddock part and I would do the Tintin part or something like that right or yeah. Tintin books or yeah, yeah. And, and he really liked that so it wasn't all on pressure of him to read yeah that's For good sure. advice yeah the graphic novels are great and it, they really draw kids in they, they yeah they really do and and um I just want to say um also if, if your child is always a struggling reader, there is accommodations for them in high school that if they um, um, have trouble reading, even the diploma exams, they can get someone to read it to them or they can get someone to write it for them called a scribe. They could also get those accommodations in university too. So, um, which is kind of nice because, you know, it's, uh, their brain smart they know a lot but sometimes that ability to communicate in the written word is just not not there and they're very rare right so um so don't worry there's a lot more supports out there now than there used to be yeah um oh and the other comment you made krista about um you know, once your child loves one book in a series is trying to find the rest of the books in the series is really, really good, too, because then you've got a big supply of, of reading material. And um, one of my kids really liked the Terry Pratchett series and um, read all 40 books he could get his hands on. And we actually submitted that for special projects credit in high school. So he got five credits for, for reading a book series he absolutely loved. So, um, yeah, it's it's good. There's lots of, of um, options out there. That's great. And if, if 
if they like one book by an author and whether or not it's part of a series, they might like other books by that author. So searching that author's name to find out what else they have. They might not all be appropriate for your kid because sometimes authors will write both adult books and children's books and young adult books. And you might not want a younger reader reading a teen book. So you might want to <laughs> be careful of that. But um yeah, it's it, it's amazing. And and if your kid likes the books by an author, then what I do is I Google search and I say, oh, my kid really likes Jenny Lindquist's books right now. Uh, is there another author that's similar to that? So I type into Google if you and I put it in quotes. So I put a quote, if you like Jenny Lindquist, and then I put an end quote and I search that. And then there's librarians out there and there's like library thing and whatnot will have people who have said, oh, um, I like this book and I also like Jenny Lundquist's books. And so you'll see other books that may or may not be appropriate. So that can be helpful too. Hmm. Great. That's good. Okay. I think we're good for questions. I think we covered everybody, but if not, please speak up. I should mention that Golda put in the link for Khan Academy in the chat. So if anybody was looking for that, that hopefully they saw that. Yeah. Thanks, Golda. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sheila, Sheena says, our small library doesn't have a specific person for the children's section, but all the staff know what's available. Bigger libraries have more staff, of course. Yeah, but sometimes smaller libraries common. have that track system too, like the regional automated track system where you can order books and and get help uh, like from a, a whole system. Yeah. Oh. And all books are reimbursable by funding like that. I've never had a book rejected for funding. So <laughs> and library moving. memberships too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd be broke with the library <laughs> with the way my kids read now. Yeah. All right. Well, Krista, thank you so much for sharing your time tonight and your absolute wonderful expertise on um, libraries and reading and literacy. I, I learned things tonight too. So thank you so much. Um, Anything else you want to close with or um any last words <laughs> no just thank you to everybody for coming and thanks for your questions and I just I wish all of you all the best with teaching your kids to read it's it's hard as an adult um as a parent watching them re learn to read and struggle but it's it's really rewarding when they do learn and it's 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 worth all the efforts and just try and keep the joy Aww. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, that is great. Thanks for doing this, Krista. That was awesome. Thank you.